Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production, starring Buddy Ebsen. Also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera, with guest stars James Naughton, Sharon Spellman, Linda Kelsey, Anthony Geary. Tonight's episode, Voice in the Night. Clover, just the way the judge likes it. <laughs> I think Judge Royce would starve to death if it weren't for the olives. Linda, don't forget the Cromwells are expecting Marge and Sam Pittman. If they're not here in 10 minutes, you take care of them. I've got a date. Here you are, Judge. Dry as a meter maid's heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, look who's here, Dr. Manning. Lewis? I don't believe my eyes. <laughs> Hello, Linda. It's good to see you again, Lewis. <laughs> Join me for a drink? I'm on duty, but when did that ever stop me? If you still have your heart set on landing, Lewis, make your move, darling, before that barracuda cousin of yours gobbles him up. It's hard to figure out why some guy hasn't latched onto you yet. Oh, well, maybe I'm too particular. Remember the last time I said that was... Yes, it was at Cynthia's last birthday party. It's been almost a year now. It's all right to talk about it. Hi, stranger. <laughs> stranger, we had lunch last week. <laughs> you didn't tell me you've been seeing Lewis. Oh? And how about hostesses drinking on duty? Did I forget to tell you about that, too? Uh, ladies. The Pittmans. Would you show them to the private room? I've got to see about dinner for the Cromwells. Now, don't you leave before I get back, okay? Well, Lewis? Judge Rice. Why have you been hiding? Your friends miss you. Thanks. I uh, haven't really been hiding. I've been keeping myself pretty busy down at the clinic. I, I just want to say that Cynthia's death, well, it, it hasn't been easy for any of us. Yeah. Judge, phone call for you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Hello? Judge Royce? Yes? This is Cynthia. I'm back. Who? Cynthia, what you did was very mean, and I hate you for it. Who is this? What is it, Judge? You look like you've just seen a ghost. What's the matter? Oh, another one of those calls. Someone claiming to be Cynthia. Oh, come on. It's just the work of some demented prankster. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I guess I'll say good night. They just won't let us forget, will they? Yeah, I, uh, I think I'd better say good night, too. Judge. I'll give you a ride home. No, no, don't worry about it. It's just a short walk. And I am not about to let that idiot telephone caller get the best of me. Good night, Willis. Good night, Judge.
Martin? Mountain no, air certainly seems to agree with you. <laughs> uh, the only thing I miss about the big city is not getting a chance to see more of you. Barnaby Jones or Claire Glover? How do you do, ma'am? I hope by asking for this little talk isn't keeping you from doing something you want to do. <laughs> I've already told Sheriff Perry everything I know. I know, but sometimes people can be helped in remembering something they may have overlooked. Mr. Jones. Everyone else accepts the fact that Judge Royce died of an accident. Why isn't that enough for you? Well, I don't say that I won't arrive at the same conclusion. But that other accident on Friday got me kind of puzzled. Friday? You talking about Dr. Anders? I didn't get a chance to tell you, but uh, California Meridian Insurance has got Barnaby working on a doubleheader. But the doctor fell while he was out hiking in the mountains. Why should there be any question about his death? The doctor's receptionist said that uh, he received a phone call before the accident from someone who identified themselves as Cynthia Glover. From Cynthia? Well, it's like I told you. The receptionist must have heard wrong, that's all. Well, that may be so, but you can see how the whole thing would take on a very sinister complexion if uh, Judge Royce had also received such a phone call. Now, you were one of the last people to see her alive, did she? No. No. If she had, she would have told me. Are you sure? Cynthia's dead, Mr. Jones. It's been almost a year since she was lost out there on the lake. And the year before that, she was under treatment to Dr. Anderson for an emotional disturbance. It was a terrible thing. Two years before, she... she'd been raped. Her mind... it was never the same after that. So you petitioned the court to have her committed to a mental institution? I had no other choice. She was my niece. I was legally responsible for her. Yes, I understand that. But you can see where my suspicions would start to twitch when you consider there was Dr. Anderson who testified as to her incompetence. And it was Judge Royce who signed the commitment order. And now both are dead within a week. A coincidence. That's all it is. Claire. Excuse me. Is that the cousin you told me about? Yes, Linda. All right, come on, you wanted to see where Judge Royce's body was found? A private detective named Jones was just out to see me. He knows Doc Anderson also got one of those calls. What about the Judge Royce call? Not yet. Oh, some crackpot's trying to ruin this town. And with that detective stirring up things, he mustn't find out about that second phone call. We don't need that kind of publicity. We've got to stick together in this. Just the way you did when you all got together and had Cynthia committed, right? Lewis, please. I know how much you love Cynthia. We all did. And I feel terrible about my part in it. But what happened is over. What if it isn't? What if she really is alive? If she didn't drown in the lake that night? Lewis! After all, they never did find her body. Stop that! Well, it could be her, couldn't it? Back after all this time to get her revenge on all of you for what you did to her. It's not going to do any good trying to panic people with talk like that, now, is it? It's been a lousy day. I think I gotta get back. Look, we've all got to try to help each other forget. Yeah, sure. Why don't you come out to the lodge tonight? At 10, after we close. We could have a late dinner. Talk? Yeah, well, if I can make it, I'll call. Please, try.
lifeguard position's open if you're interested. I might consider it. If the pool is always full of as pretty young ladies as you. You're cute. What do you want to know? You sure I'm not twisting your arm? Why hassle? You've been asking a lot of questions about those crazy phone calls. I figured I was next. I only know of one phone call, the one to Dr. Anderson. Were there others? Yes, there was another. Judge Royce took it at the lodge the night she died. From someone who called herself Cynthia Glover? Why don't you ask Claire? She was there. Thanks. I'll give it another try. The investigation coming along all right? It would be coming along better if I had been provided with all the available facts. Oh? I guess you had your own reasons for not telling me that Judge Royce received a Cynthia phone call the night she died. I'm wondering what those reasons are. Quite simply, I wanted it hushed up to protect a lot of innocent business people, myself included, who might be hurt if it got out that some malicious prankster was trying to scare away the visitors from our resort area. I suppose you didn't realize when I told you about Dr. Anderson's call that we are probably dealing with a homicidal maniac. <laughs> Let's not over-dramatize it, Mr. Jones. There's got to be a more rational explanation. Excuse me, Miss Clover. They still didn't bring enough firewood. They'll make another delivery tomorrow morning. There you are. Hey. You're not the regular driver. He's been sick. Wait a minute. Nelson. Something wrong? That driver, Nelson Mosley. He's the man who raped Cynthia. My name is Barnaby Jones. I'm a private investigator. Saw you at the Glover place. What do you want? Well, a few straight answers from you might be helpful. I want to talk to you a little bit about your problems with the late Judge Royce, Dr. Anderson. Read about it. It was in the papers three years ago. Yeah, I already have. And the way I get the story, Judge Royce presided at your trial for the rape of Cynthia Glover. And Dr. Anderson was one of the chief medical witnesses against you? Look, Jones, they're dead. My problems with them are over. Well, maybe not. The way it's beginning to shape up, their accidents are looking more and more like murder. Don't matter to me how they got to hell as long as they got there. You didn't help them get there, did you? <sighs> no, that's a privilege they don't give ex-cons on parole. Look, mister, I'm busy. I don't want to hold you up, but there is one more thing. Before they died, both the judge and Dr. Anderson reported that they had received scary phone calls from someone using the name of Cynthia Glover. What are you trying to pull? Well, the question is, are you trying to pull anything using a woman's voice to fake calls from a dead girl? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Well, in that case, uh, you won't mind saying where you were when the judge died and when Dr. Anderson was found at the base of the cliff? I've been in San Diego the past week. I drove in here last night. Now, you can check that. I will. But you're right about me having it in for Doc Anderson and the judge. They burned me on a bum rap, and I'm glad they're dead. Are you saying you were framed? Like Whistler's mother. The whole mob, including Cynthia, nailed me to the wall. They couldn't believe that a fruit picker's kid could make out with a lousy princess without knocking her to the ground first. So when a Cynthia cried rape and her boyfriend Lewis backed her up, well, that's how she wrote. Lewis? Yeah, him, the doc, the judge, all of them. Three to ten years heavy time. And I would still be stamping license plates if the boss here hadn't promised the parole board I'd have a job if they let me out. There was a Lewis Manning in the restaurant the night the judge died. Is that the boyfriend that you're referring to? Yeah. 
Nowadays, he's a kid shrink at the clinic in town. Thank you very much. Just me. That was a pretty dumb joke. Don't be mad, Lewis. You like my dress? I think it makes me look very pretty, don't you? What are you trying to do, Linda? What do you want? Isn't it obvious? Yeah. I just love it here, don't you, Lewis? It's my magic garden where all my dreams come true. Stop it. You know Cynthia and I used to come here all the time. What are you trying to do? Nothing. You and your damn ghost. Cynthia's dead. Don't you understand? She's dead, and I'm alive. I'm sorry. Lewis! I'm sorry, Lewis. I just want you to forget Cynthia. Please, Lewis. There are other girls you can love. What's this all about? It's nothing, Claire. Lewis, you leave Lewis alone. Do you hear me, Claire? You've already taken everything else that belonged to Cynthia, the restaurant, her inheritance. Linda, that's enough. No, I'm not going to let her have Lewis, too. Never. I'm sorry. About dinner tonight. I told you, I'll call. Well, Dr. Manning, they told me at the clinic that I might find you here. Uh, my name is Barnaby Jones. Oh, yeah, the private detective. Yes. According to Sheriff Perry, you left the lodge about the same time as Judge Royce. That's right. Did you notice anything unusual? No, I, uh, I offered her a ride home. She said no, so I took off. You and Cynthia Glover were very close, weren't you? We were going to be married. I know about the uh, Cynthia call to the judge. I see. Uh, well, if you know that already, uh, there's nothing else to tell. I wonder if you would mind telling me a little something about Cynthia. It's very difficult to visualize someone unless you have uh, some sort of an image. Uh, I hear she was very beautiful. Yes. Here, um, you can see for yourself. That picture was taken uh, a couple of days before. Uh, see, Cynthia had gone to a party ahead of me, and when I arrived, I couldn't find her, so I went out looking for her. And, uh, I found them in the garden. Nelson Mosley? Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think I would have killed him right there with my hands if I hadn't heard that scream and seen the look on her face. After a couple of days, it became very obvious that she'd been severely traumatized. How long after that was her first talk about having her committed? Well, it was touch and go for almost two years. Uh, Claire uh, was her aunt. 
and her closest relative. I guess she thought she was doing what was best for Cynthia. But you didn't. Psychology's my field, Mr. Johns. I was only a graduate student then, but I tried to convince them to show them that it was only a temporary condition, that it was a trauma arising out of the shock of having been raped. But Dr. Anderson didn't agree. No, oh, no, he, uh, he thought she was being a menace to herself and to all the people around her. So he got Judge Royce to sign the papers. And that night, Cynthia rode a boat out into the middle of the lake, and that was the last time anybody saw her. The sheriff had the lake dragged, but they never found the body. That's right. Uh, they found the boat with her sweater in it. I guess they figured that she was lost somewhere in the deep caverns of the lake bed. Yes, I understand that's happened before. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. Barnaby Jones office, J.R. Jones speaking. Jedediah, I pay you a retainer for valuable services, not one of which includes being a receptionist. Hiya, Barnaby. I was just covering for Betty so she can get her hair done. Anyway, I figure answering the phone kind of gives me the feel of the operation here. Did Betty fill you in on the Judge Royce case? Yeah, what's up? Tell Betty I need the medical records of the Cynthia Glover commitment. She can find them in the Coverton County Courthouse. You think there's a connection? Maybe two of the principals in the decision to commit are suddenly dead, and the aunt is suddenly wealthy. Wow. How about if Betty and I come up there and give you a hand, huh? Don't you have a class today in corporate law? There's got to be more to life than trying to pass a California bar, Barnaby. Listen, little cousin, just burn one end of the candle at a time. I'll talk to you later. OK, bye. Glover Lodge. Hold on. So are you, Miss Glover? Is it Lewis Manning? Uh, sounds like a woman. I'll be right there. We'll be with you in just a minute. Don't forget to leave the front door unlocked for Lewis. OK. Good night. I could have talked to Claire one more time, just 
once more to tell her how sorry I am for all the mean things I said. And you didn't see your cousin again after you ran off yesterday? I was upset. I stayed in my apartment in town all night. 10.05, Sheriff. That's your determination at the time of death? No, I can't imagine any other way that Claire's watch would be broken except when she was struck by the pot. Uh, Harry, you took off for home a little after 10? Two, three minutes at the most. Harry told my uh, deputy that Claire asked him to leave the front door open for you. How come he never showed up? I got tied up at the clinic. Uh, I tried to call to beg off. There was no answer. Harry, didn't you tell my deputy that Claire did receive a call from Lewis? No, he got it wrong. I told him there was a call that Claire thought was Mr. Manning. What call was there? Didn't get her name. Her name? Well, it sounded like a woman, I think. Well, think harder, Harry. Was it the same voice that called Judge Royce the night she died? Well, now, wait a minute. I didn't hear anything about a call to the judge. Well, Miss Glover made us promise not to say anything about it. I'll talk to you about that later, Martin. Was it? It could have been. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe it was uh, the voice of the woman calling herself Cynthia. Well, Martin, are you beginning to contemplate the possibilities? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If somebody is murdering these people, I'm still not going to believe that it's the work of a supernatural killer. We found this on the floor next to the body. C. L. G. Cynthia Lynn Glover. If someone is trying to make us believe a dead girl committed those murders, they're trying awfully hard. It's obvious. That killer planted this next to the body to throw everybody off. Just like he or she or whoever it is, uh, pretending to be Cynthia making those calls. streets. Oh, listen to that. The pot cursing the kettle. Well, it's time you listened for a change. I did listen. I listened for a day and a half in that courthouse till I wanted to throw up. You all railroaded me. Three years. And throw in this arm I lost in a prison fight. Now, that's what the lie Cynthia told cost me. I was there. I saw it. You were there at the end. You didn't see her the night she got to that party all wild-eyed, acting weird. Like she was on something, pot uppers, I don't know, something. No, she didn't do any of that. Oh, yeah? Then maybe you didn't know her like you let on. She was flying, especially after she got me to take her into the garden. Got you? That's right. It wasn't me that made the first move. She said she needed air. Something else she needed. Come at me grabbing and pawing. No! Yes! She said I was dirt and she wanted to wallow in it. And it wasn't until you showed up that she changed. All sudden, like, then she's crying rape. Well, you and all the others, you didn't want to know the truth then, and you don't want to know it now. But that's the way it was. Look, man, I already put in my time. I got no reason to lie. You gotta believe me, Cynthia was out of her skull that night. 
Uh, if anything comes up, I'll give you a call. Uh, where are you staying? Pineview Motel. Harry, I want you back here at 5 o'clock. Today? Yes. We still have a business to run, you know. Yes, Miss Clover. Gentlemen. And her cousin's body is not even cold yet. Is Linda the sole heir to Clara's estate, or do the other relatives share also? Oh, as far as I know, she's the end of the line. Yeah. Maybe I'd better have one of my deputies try to do a little checking on her alibi. I'll see you. That's what you get for not paying me a halfway decent living wage. <laughs> Here's the medical testimony from Cynthia Glover's commitment hearing. What's all that? A couple of fingerprints I left it in a phone booth. You mean you have something? I won't know until the sheriff checks it out with the FBI. Just any old phone booth? No, the phone booth closest to the lodge. The uh, bartender said that uh, Claire received a call at the bar just before closing time. And shortly after that, she was dead. Think it was another Cynthia call? Well, the call would have had it been made close enough so the killer could get there in just those few minutes. Might not have been that uh, phone booth. Might have. What do you got? Well, some pretty depressing reading, I'm afraid. Besides Dr. Vincent Anderson's testimony, there's also some unpublished background reports from a coin-appointed uh, neurologist, a Dr. William Reston. He did a series of tests on Cynthia. Yeah, psychological profile. Full physical. Rorschach. EEG brainwave. What is it? Betty, we've got to have a talk with Dr. Lewis Manning. the clinic. Oh, uh, I tried there, and they, uh, they gave me this address. Uh, what time do you expect him home? Hard to tell. Lewis keeps the apartment, but he's rarely here. He's been staying mostly at a cabin he owns up in the mountains. How would I get there? Out the highway, 12 miles, to the Ridgecrest turnoff. Left for another eight miles, and <laughs> there you are. Got his name on the box, can't miss. Isn't it kind of unusual maintaining two homes in a community this size? True. Lewis has cause to be eccentric. When he's out at the clinic, he's become a sort of hermit. It all started with the death of a girl he was going to marry. I see. Well, thank you.
Well, there's no car. And unless Mr. Manning is a long-distance jogger, we've struck out again. Well, let's give it a try. Must we? Dr. Manning? Barnaby, if we um, have to put in some waiting time, uh, could we do it in the car? Don't tell me you're afraid of the woods, Betty. Not of the woods. Just of the bears and the lions and the snakes in the woods. Yeah, take a look at this. What? The bars? Yeah. Same thing down here. Well, is there something strange about people wanting to protect themselves with barred windows? The first rule about protecting property is uh, try not to get robbed in the first place. Well, that sounds reasonable. The way to do that is to make sure that any potential intruder sees that the house is very hard to break into. Of course. The bar should be on the outside, not hidden inside. Yeah. I think we ought to have a look inside. Right. Wrong. Can't seem to make the tumblers catch. Ah, oh, you did it again. No, I didn't. The door was uh, unlocked. Oh, I see. It was broken on the inside. Quite have the Spartan look of a man living as a hermit. <laughs> well, apparently he has found himself a lady hermit to share the lonely hours. Betty? Cynthia Glover. Get out. Now, take it easy, doctor. We just want to have a little talk. This is my daughter-in-law, Betty Jones. The manager told you to try me at the clinic. You've got no right breaking in here. We didn't exactly break in. The door lock was already broken. Now, would you like to tell me why, or would you like me to tell you? What I would really like is for you to leave. Right now. All right. But the uh, sheriff will probably be interested in my theory, which includes the reason why you installed these bars the way you did which is not to keep people out, but to lock somebody in. I don't know what you mean. This is a copy of the rap sheet from the file of Cynthia Glover's commitment hearing. She was apparently arrested at one time for drunken driving. Well, they took her whole life's history, so what? These are a couple of fingerprints I picked up in the phone booth near the lodge this morning. They match. Oh, that's ridiculous. Those phone calls from Cynthia, she made them herself, didn't she? No, Mosley made them. Nelson Mosley made them. He did it for revenge. That's why he came back here, to get a job at the mill so he could be close. Won't wash, Lewis. Those fingerprints are conclusive. And if the sheriff wants more, I'm sure he can pick up hundreds here in the cabin. <clears throat> no, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't understand. I think I do. A man in love with a woman, a professional psychologist who knew before anyone else that the woman's mind was not stable. And he felt qualified to help her with her problem, but desperately afraid that he might lose her to some institution. 
I can understand that. She's my whole life, Mr. Jones. That night Cynthia rode out on the lake. You got there in time to save her, didn't you? Yeah. Then you brought her up here, caged her in, and spent all that time trying to cure her. It was working, too. Every day she was improving. She was opening up. Uh, she was becoming more like the girl that she used to be. The one I fell in love with. And last Friday, I came home from the clinic, and uh, she'd broken through the lock. Someone's taking the jeep. Cynthia. That was Cynthia, and she was listening. She knows that Nelson Mosley's out of jail. I swear it wasn't. Yes, it was. And the rest of them, too. They wanted to put me away in a place where they locked the doors forever. Like the place Lewis locked you in? Yes. But I got away from Lewis, didn't I? Take it easy. Everything's going to be all right, Miss. Take it easy. <laughs> the only thing that kept me going all that time in prison was how much I hated her for what she did to me. How glad I was she was dead. Now, all I can feel is sorry for her. My deputy just radioed in. They picked Lewis up. I don't know what the DA is going to charge him with yet, but that man's indirectly responsible for three deaths. It's incredible. And it all could have been avoided if he hadn't tried to play God. You think there's still a chance for Cynthia, Mr. Jones? Well, she's in the right hands now. That's the best chance anybody can get. Thank you. 